Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the drone biz gets long-awaited new regulations. Also, airborne programming to expand in 2021. And Russian border flights require over 400 NATO intercepts. Thank you for joining us this Wednesday. We hope you're having a great week. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have an exciting episode today filled with the latest news, so let's start with. The FAA has released long-awaited final rules for drones. The new rules will require remote identification of drones and allow operators of small drones to fly over people and at night under certain conditions. These rules come at a time when drones represent the fastest growing segment in the entire transportation sector. With over 1.7 million drone registrations and 203,000 FAA certificated remote pilots, Remote ID will help mitigate risks associated with expanded drone operations, such as flying over people and at night. And both rules support technological and operational innovation and advancements. Remote ID is a major step towards the full integration of drones into the national airspace system. Remote ID provides identification of drones in flight as well as the location of their control stations, allegedly providing crucial information to national security agencies and law enforcement partners, as well as other officials charged with ensuring public safety. The operations over people and at night rule applies to Part 107 operators. The ability to fly over people and moving vehicles varies depending on the level of risk a small drone operation represents to people on the ground. Additionally, this rule allows for operations at night under certain conditions. After two years in limbo, the 737 MAX returns to service. Those details after these messages. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in this brief segment we call Around the Patch. So let's start with the 737 MAX has returned to scheduled passenger service with Tuesday's flight by American Airlines from Miami to LaGuardia. The flight reportedly carried more than just some trusting passengers after the aircraft came out of a nearly two years of limbo. It also carried the wife of the captain, the first officer's mother, and American Airlines president, Robert Isom. Well, there's no pressure there, right? And the schedule calls initially for one Miami, New York round trip daily until January, when more will join the flock. EPA finalizes first greenhouse gas emission standards for aircrafts. The EPA has finalized emission standards for airplanes used in commercial aviation and large business jets. This action will align U.S. standards with the International Carbon Dioxide Emission Standards set by the ICAO, ensuring domestically manufactured aircraft remain competitive in the global marketplace. This final rulemaking also reportedly sets a precedent with the Trump administration being the first to regulate greenhouse gas emissions from aircrafts. NATA gets extension of existing relief and new Czech Airmen exemption. They have been granted COVID-related relief deadline extensions for proficiency and competency checks and completion of crew training. The association worked to secure a vital exemption. 
the FAA exemption number 18685, extending the time frame for a Czech airman to conduct a proficiency or competency check under the observation of an FAA inspector or an aircrew designated examiner from 24 months to 36 months. LifeLink 3 plans a new air medical base in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. This new base, which marks the company's 10th air medical base throughout Minnesota and Wisconsin, is scheduled to begin 24-7 operations starting in spring of 2021. This base will be located at the Rhinelander Oneida County Airport, which allows the company to support the growing needs of this area and LifeLink 3's consortium member owners. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. Airborne programming is expanding in 2021. We've teased this for a while, but ANN will be returning to a daily webcast schedule right after the start of 2021. We're hoping that 2021 will be a much better year. Here's why we're doing this. It's because the aviation community deserves all the honest, real journalistic support we can give it. And this is one more way to do it. There are also a number of major changes coming your way. We will also be debuting a new Airborne series devoted to affordable aviation called Airborne Affordable Flyers, which will also be supporting the coming debut of the next generation sport plane resource guide. We will also be introducing a series of Airborne video podcast interviews, asking hard questions and dealing with real world problems facing aviation without hiding from the tough issues no one else has covered. Further, other special topics due to receive special treatment by Airborne includes avionics, the women in aviation, 99's community, and more, much more. Your news tips and story ideas are welcomed moving forward because after all, we're doing this for you. Speak up and help us start 2021 off on the right foot. Guess how many intercepts NATO had for 2020? Those details after the break. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training, and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're going to hear more about it. BLT is just another tick on your pre-flight checklist until you need it. Did you ever wonder what would happen if you had an engine failure over the mountains, marshland, or other dangerous terrain? Take to the skies confidently with the most reliable and highest performing ELTs and safety products on board that instantly mobilize life-saving search and rescue across the world. Read survivor stories from aviators and adventurers who survived life-threatening encounters thanks to ACR and Artec's life-saving technology. Luck favors the prepared at SurvivorClub.com. Welcome back. Russian border flights require over 400 NATO intercepts. This year, NATO air forces across Europe scrambled more than 400 times in 2020 to intercept unknown aircraft approaching Alliance airspace. Almost 90% of these missions, around 350, were in response to flights by Russian military aircraft. This is a moderate increase from 2019. Russian military aircraft often do not transmit transponder code indications for the position or altitude, do not file a flight plan, or do not communicate with air traffic controllers, posing a potential risk to civilian airliners. Across Europe, some 40 air surveillance radars and reporting hubs and about 60 NATO jets are on duty 24-7 to serve as a quick response force for aircraft which fall into distress or defy international flying rules near Alliance airspace. NATO jets responds to unannounced military flights as well as civilian aircrafts losing communication with air traffic controllers for any reason, which could range from technical problems to hijacking. NATO has two air operation centers, one in Germany covering Northern Europe and one in Spain covering the South, which monitor all air movements across Europe. 
Well, that does it for our show today, our last show of the year. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We are wishing you Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2021.